Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. So, uh, all right, so last week we did the uh, first version of the show. I hope it all turned out well because I'm recording both episodes, both shows today. So i um, hoping that last week's turned out exactly how I wanted. If not, well, I'll tweak it a little more. But uh, anyway, so let's, uh, let's get right into the wine here. And uh, so I bought this a uh, little story how and why I bought this. I've seen this la label for a while in the store, and uh, one of the places I worked actually had, uh, I think, their old vine Zin. And I was just kind of like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, especially, you know, the, the place I worked at and the type of wines we had, it was like, yeah, they're not going to be anything great anyway. Um, but I've never had one, so it's kind of bad to sit there and make these judgment calls, you know, on wines that you've never had just based upon whatever. All right. So I was in the store, and I told the told the, this wine rep who happened to be there. I said, "Hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And uh, do you have any suggestions?" And he suggested Gnarly Head. And actually, had, if I remember, he actually suggested the Authentic Red. So this is what we've got: we've got the 2010 Gnarly Head Authentic Red. Uh, this is from Lodi, California. And uh, so he was like, "Yeah, man, this wine we're doing really well with. It's selling a lot. Blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Okay." No, you know, and and he's he's the rep for the for the wine. Well, actually, I think I think he's the rep for the, the distributor. Maybe not the rep for the wine itself, but um, but you know how, you know they they they're, they're you know he's going to suggest these wines, you know. But I told him like, yeah, who's the rep for the distributor? So I'm like, what wines do you have in your portfolio? Think I should try. So a few months later, I'm finally trying it. So I bought it for nine ninety nine at World Market. It regularly sells for eleven ninety nine. And uh, so uh, these, these uh, Gnarly Head, they've been around for a little while. Um, the, kind of their claim to fame is, that, well, the name of the, name of the winery, Gnarly Head, is because the, especially the Zin, Zinfandel vines, they have gnarly heads. It's called head training. Not really sure exactly what head training is because um, it's not something I've really looked at a whole lot during my studies with wine. But um, basically, the, the tops of the vines, and if you go to the website, and I don't know if you can see it on, you, you kind of get an idea from the label. Um, but the tops of the, the heads of the vines are kind of gnarly, okay? And I know for sure the Zin is that way, but they talk about the other vines doing the same type of head training. And that these vines are 35 to 80 years old. So these are older vines, um, which means that the grapes... They have less grapes, they produce less grapes, they're smaller berries, so you have more concentrated flavors. And versus your bulk wines that are just, you know, full big berries and they're in fertile territory and they just grow, grow like weeds, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, let's get right into the wine. All right, check the color. Uh, pretty deep, and not, I can't really see through it very well. Um, and I don't have a white background now on the on the thing, but um, I'm just gonna save and do that. But you know what? It, it's a nice deep dark color. Not a huge lot of rim variation. I mean, it's only two years old, so it's not gonna show any type of uh, what we call age. Uh, as far as staining on the glass, I don't really see too much staining on the glass with the tears, but. Uh, I'd say a medium viscosity. Yeah. It's 14.5% alcohol, which is about what it should be. Phone's ringing in the background. Let that go off to voicemail. All right, let's check it out. Hmm. It smells pretty good so far. Oh, I forgot to say what's in the wine. It's Zin Merlot, Cab Cabernet Sauvignon, and Petit Syrah. 
forgot. So Zin-based wine. Assuming that Zin is the most, is the, uh, is the most, uh, whatever, the most amount that they fall like the typical order is the highest amount of, of highest percentage. That's the word I'm looking for. Highest percentage is Zin. Hmm. Okay, so darker red fruits and a touch of smoke. Maybe a little bit of wood. I'm getting more like baking spices, not really any vanilla. And that's really about it. Let's check out the palette. Really kind of an explosion really there in the mouth. Um, some really nice fruit in there. Uh, it's, I'm getting some really good cherries. And again, I had some cherries at lunch today, so I might be keen on cherries a little more than I normally would. But man, it really, I can, I really get a lot of cherries in it. Uh, some spices. I'm getting that hint of wood still. I'm getting, you know, I feel like I'm eating into the wood, which, you know, it is what it is. You know, maybe I'm, I'm imagining biting into the actual vine, the gnarly head of the vine, um, or just some tree bark. Um, but man, some really juicy fruit. It tastes very juicy. Like, like I actually ate the fruit. T tannins, medium minus, um, almost low, but medium minus. Uh, acidity, I think it's really high acidity, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Um, I just didn't think that the acidity would be that high. I wouldn't say it's high acidity, but probably medium plus, so not too bad. On uh, the alcohol, in those 14.5% alcohol, it's very well contained. So, um, you know, I think it's a really well made wine, especially for $10 to $12. Um, if you're out there and you want to you try something that's pretty good, I'd say go ahead and try it. Um, I want to see if they had anything. Um, I just want to say they had anything on here specifically about tasting notes. I didn't see anything. Um, but man, I'm still tasting the fruit. So it's got a really good long finish. Uh, and that's really nice to have in a wine, especially a, a lower price wine. You know, I, I'm going to say, I mean, I know I just had a $27 bottle of wine. I gave it an 88 and I said it's pretty well made and I'd buy it again. But man, for $10, $12, I'd give this a 90. I mean, I don't give 90s very often. I think it's good to get a good balance. I know, I know the cherries are coming through a lot, but I think it's good balance and everything. You know, I, I really give this. I mean, I like it a lot, and that's you know that is part of what the scoring is. We're gonna be talking a little bit, talking about that a little bit later in in the show about scoring and how 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 do we come up with scores. But um, I really dig this wine. Definitely. You find it at your local grocery store or local wine shop, which you probably will. Um, I say definitely go for it. Uh, it says pair it with bold, boldly flavored foods like steak, grilled chops, or barbecue. Sure. You know, put, you know, I don't know. Sounds good. I'd probably go more barbecue and steak rather than chops, but you know, if you have some good pork chops. I can see doing that. All right, so uh, that's gonna do it for this segment. We're gonna move on to the next wine. Um, again, I'm still learning how I wanna move from segment to segment. Hmm, haven't figured that out yet. So, all right, so we're, that's gonna do it for this wine. We're gonna move on to the next wine um, after this break. If you're watching it on the website or Blip TV, if you're not, you're gonna see the little go through and we're gonna be on the next wine. All right, so now we're moving on to the next wine. Now this wine, I bought 
really because of the name. Uh, it was on Woot, uh, wine.woot.com. I bought it because of the name. Uh, honestly, I didn't look up to see the exact price I paid for it, but it was, it was probably under $20 a bottle because I bought three bottles worth. Um, but this is, I'm putting this as a premium wine because they sell it for $24 a bottle on the site, or is it $25? Anyway, so let's, let's get right into this, okay? So this is the Martian Ranch and Vineyard 2009 Grenache from the Santa Inez Valley. I think I pronounced that right. Um, so on their website, you can buy it for $24, okay? And uh, it's 100% Grenache, if I'm correct on this, all right? So uh, Martian Vineyards. So um, it didn't say when they started it, but the, the person who created it is Non uh, Heigland. I don't think it's Nan. Maybe it is Nan. I don't know. I know someone who goes by Non, and it's, pronounced, it's spelled N-A-N, so we'll go with Non Heigland. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to just read a little story, and this is, I thought that was funny. Despite rumors to the contrary, Martian is the blending of the names of her, I guess it's her, it's not, well, there's a guy sitting here, so I thought it was, uh, they had guys on, the, on pictures of guys, so I thought maybe it was a guy, so yeah, maybe it's Nan. Uh, anyway, uh, son, names of her sons, Martin and Ian. The Martian seen occasionally on the premises is as much a mystery to her as it is to anyone else. So Martian. All right, for those who don't quite know, haven't been watching the show long enough for me to make these Martian references, um, my, on my Twitter side, my other Twitter is Mars, M-A-R-Z, and the number eight. Mars is a name I've been using 25 years. Um, so it's an alter ego. It's, it's uh, you know, how I, especially on the internet, how I identify myself, unless I'm doing a wine thing specifically, but it's how I identify myself uh, on the internet, uh, bulletin boards, gaming, whatever. Uh, heck, it's just my alternate name. So alter ego. So anything Mars related, I'm all about. So I saw Martian Vineyards. I was like, well, I got to buy the wine to, to check it out. So finally getting, getting a chance to, to uh, try the wine. So um, uh, let's go to, yeah, they didn't really put anything on here as far as, uh, as, far as the wine. So we're going, to, we're going to make the assumption that it's 100% Grenache, uh, though it technically could have up to, up to 25% other grapes in it, okay? All right, so let's check it out. Color? All right, it's, it's not opaque. You can kind of see through it, so it's a little bit light. So that's not too bad. Okay, check out the viscosity. Garen, I've, I've had a lot, of, a lot of wines in this glass, so viscosity might be a little bit deceptive now. But also just, just you know, swirling the wine in the glass, I don't see a lot of staining. Mmm. Hey, no cherries, by the way. So I don't get any cherries. Not so much on the fruit, but more of an earthiness, minerality to it. Kind of smoky. Um, a little bit of wood. Um, kind of interesting. It's a little bit different than I'm used to. Like I said, I don't really get a whole heck of a lot of fruit. I get a little bit of earthiness and some wood and a little smoke. All right, let's see how it tastes. I'm digging this wine. It's 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 earthy, and I don't mean earthy like as in manure, barnyard type of stuff. Uh, nor am I talking like earthy minerality like wet rock. 
but it's got, it's just, I mean, kind of forest floor, but not really. But some good smoky characteristics to it. You know, kind of like you're at a campfire. It's, it's pretty darn good. I really like it. Um, but like I said, it's, it's really kind of smoky. But again, not a lot of fruit. I don't really get a whole lot of fruit. Maybe a little red fruit here and there, but... And actually, in a way... Okay, so I keep talking about I don't get a lot of fruit. Maybe some blueberry type of stuff. A little blue fruit type of thing, okay? I get maybe a hint of that. Tannins, right here, right here. Not all over the mouth. I'm going to say they're medium tannins. Acid's pretty good. i say medium to medium plus on the tannins. Um... It doesn't taste like the alcohol is really high. I can't tell uh, just from tasting it, but let's see what it says. 14%, so well contained. Um, I really dig the wine, and it's just that smoky characteristic. I mean, man, you should barbecue. I mean, just just some nice brisket. That light just went out. All right, so that means I'm getting near the end of the time for the batteries. But um, you know, I really, I'm really digging the wine. Is it the most phenomenal wine I've ever had? No. But I really like it. You know, I, keep, you know, I just want to make you realize I'm not thinking it's like phenomenal, but man, I really like it. I mean, I, and I'm, I'm going to give it a 90, you know, which again, we don't give 90s a lot in this show, or I don't. So um, I think it's really good. And uh, for sure, you know, uh, on Woot, you know, I got this thing off of Woot, and uh, now I really need to make sure I tell you exactly how much I paid for because I left everything, I left the the information upstairs, but $24, I don't think is an unreasonable amount of money for, um, for this wine at all. So, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's a reasonably priced, uh, amount for the wine, but, um, you know, it's definitely something that if, uh, if you could find this wine, totally, uh, totally get it. And if you, if it's on a woot, you know, there's going to be a really good, it's gonna, there's going to be a really good uh, uh, price point for it. But, um, and it's, it's looking it up. I don't know if it's going to find it or not. I might be able to find it. I was just on the internet alone. But if I remember correctly, I think I paid for the three bottles like maybe 50 bucks for, th for all three bottles. I think it was like $49 for the three bottles. So um, I was finally looked at the, the, the price at 49 it wasn't that it wasn't that expensive, so definitely recommend it. And Santa Inez, I mean, it's not like a, a variety. It's not like an area that you're really going to be. Um, it's not something that you're going to really uh, see a whole lot of out there. And um, man, I, and I'm really still tasting the wine, and I'm still getting that smoke. Like when I breathe out through my nose. Still get that smoke. It's it's just um, it's just really really nice. Long finish, definitely. All right, let's see. Boom, Grenache. Looks like they sell quite a few of their wines through through Whoop too. So um, I don't see the price on here. So they put the alcohol at 13.7, but the label says 14. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they didn't put the price on here. That's all right. I would say buy it. Absolutely. And it's, I'm still getting the smoke. Still getting the smoke. We're talking like a couple minutes after tasting the wine. I'm getting the smoke. All right. So um, I said highly recommend it. Buy it. Um and then uh, stay tuned for the next segment right after this. All right, so now we're into the next segment today. Um, yet another question I got via Twitter. So I don't know this person. Um, in, I don't know this person personally, but uh, we're gonna head right into it. So here's the question. All right, so how do you figure out a score? That's kind of the the the, the gist of the question. He really was kind of like, what do you look for? Blah blah blah. So we're gonna go through all that. This is from Cowboy One Brian. Uh, he's up in Dallas. He's one of my newer followers on Twitter. 
All right, so first of all, let's just go through it. And you probably saw that I was, I, since I knew I was gonna answer this question, I kind of was going through all these steps a little bit more like I should, but it didn't also hurt that I just did a Beaujolais tasting a couple weeks ago. So we kind of did something similar in the Psalm tasting at Culinaria. So we kind of did all this and it reminded me how I should taste wine. All right, so let's start off visual. All right, so uh, you look at the color. Color will tell you a decent amount. Now, um, it's not going to tell you necessarily quality of the wine, but it can tell you a few things like age. It can also reveal a few clues about what type of grape or grapes were used in the, uh, in the blend. Um, but color also, you want to look at that. You, you want to look at rim variation, uh, depending on the edges of, edges of the, the, the wine when you lay it flat a little bit. You can see if there's some discoloration or if it, or if it changes, changes color, it can indicate some aging. Uh, opacity, again, that, that kind of can give you some indication as to whether or not uh, a certain grape, you know, if, it's, if it matches the profile of a certain grape, when you're try, especially when you're doing blind tasting. Um, or like in the case of, say, some California Pinot Noirs instead of versus a Burgundy from, from, uh, from Burgundy, which is 100% Pinot Noir, it might be a little bit lighter and you can see your uh, hand through it. Some California Pinot Noirs and, and others, we beat up on Cali, Cali Pinot, but they're known for adding some other red grapes to it to kind of give it a little bit better color, a little bit more oomph. So it's maybe not 100% Pinot. Uh, clarity, that can also, doesn't necessarily mean that the wine is better or, or worse because some winemakers do not filter, but it's just good to see, you know, is, is, is it clear? Um, is, there, is it filtered or unfiltered? And viscosity. Now that's when you swirl the wine a little bit and you look at what's called the legs. Now it used to be that people thought legs indicated quality. It has nothing to do with the quality of the wine. Um, but it, what it can do is help you understand how, uh, how much alcohol is in the wine. So, um, and also if you, if you, when you check it out, are the legs stained? So that can also give you some indication of what kind of grape you're dealing with. All right, bouquet. So something that I got reminded at the Somme taste, at the sommelier tasting, um, and also at the Beaujolais tasting was FEW, fruit, earth, and wood. Okay, so you're gonna hear this a few times throughout the rest of this segment. All right, so you're looking for these three things. Now maybe not in that order, but a lot of times we, we concentrate on fruit first because a lot of times with wine you're getting the fruit aromas first. Now also includes floral. So the F is like fruit and floral. Uh, earth is what we call minerality. And wood is wood characteristics. So I'll kind of go that, you know, types of fruit. So whether it's citrus or stone fruit, which is like an apricot or a peach because it has a big pit called a stone. Um, is it like berries, red, dark, red fruit, black fruit, blue fruit, that type of stuff. Floral, you know, whatever the floral thing is. Minerality or earthiness. Um, minerality is, is kind of a general term. Um, people a lot of times think about minerals or chalk or rock, but it also can mean earth floor, mushrooms, uh, leaves, that type of stuff. And then wood characteristics. It's not necessarily smelling the wood, but oak aging um, has certain things where it will impart certain characteristics. We kind of touched upon that last week with baking spices and vanilla uh, and, and butteriness, not butteriness, that's not the yeast, but um, imparting like baking spices or, or some type of vanilla type of stuff or Christmas spices, uh, it will help or it, it will impart some of that onto the wine. All right, your palate. Similar to bouquet, you still get the FEW. So you're looking for the, looking again for the fruit, the earthiness or the floral earthiness, fruit, floral, earthiness or wood. Um, but you're also looking at a few other things. So you're looking at mouthfeel. This is the body of the wine. Is it light? Is it heavy? We like to use the, the analogy of milk. Skim milk is light, so it doesn't coat your mouth as much, whereas you have whole milk, it coats it a lot. Tannins, that's the stuff that makes you pucker up. It's the same stuff you find on tea leaves. Uh, that's why you get that astringency when you drink hot tea. When you're drinking really, really sweet iced tea, it's, it, the astringency isn't so much, but you're drinking that, that tea that you seeped for a while and you take that first sip and you're like, okay, and your mouth dries out, that's your tannins. So you're looking for that. Um, acid, that's, um, that also is what causes you to your, your mouth to water. Um, so you're looking at how much acid is in the wine. 
Sugar, how much residual sugar, if any, is in the wine? Is it a dry wine? Is it a semi-sweet wine? Is it a, is it a sweet wine? The alcohol, how much alcohol is in there? Um, you're looking to see if you could de detect the alcohol. Not that if it has it, it has alcohol. But is the alcohol contained? Is it, is it, was it made in such a way, was the wine made in such a way that the alcohol is not noticeable? And then your finish. So is it a long finish, a medium finish, a short finish? Um, that tends to give you a perception of how good a wine is by how long you taste it after you, you, you do that initial sip. Um, I mean, I've had some wines the past couple weeks you know, on the show that I was tasting for, for minutes and others was like, okay, I don't really taste anything, all right? So you, you're looking at all these things and you're, you're wanting to see what kind of balance that you have. Um, is something out of balance? Is something more prominent than the next? And, and what kinds of flavors are you getting? So now what you're doing is you're, you're going through the analysis. Like I said, balance. Is, is the wine balanced? Is the sugar and acid levels balanced? Or are the sugar and acid levels balanced? Uh, are, is, are the tannins what they should be? Or is it just rips you a new one, okay? Uh, or is it supposed to? It could be a very, very heav heavily tannic wine and it needs time to breathe. And you just, you just pop it out of the bottle and it really hasn't time to really open up and soften the tannins. Um, you're looking at quality. And that's an overall impression of how well everything was put together. Um, now you're getting to the point of faults. I talked about Brettanomyces, which was which is a which is a yeast uh, that imparts certain things like Band Aid, okay, um, it'll, or or other like barnyard type of of aromas and flavors to a wine. Now some people find that really great. The barnyard stuff I don't mind. Band Aid maybe not so much, but um, I don't like to see that as overpowering everything. And some people view that as a complete fault. So we're talking quality. How much of how much of anything? You know, too much of one thing could be too much of anything is not necessarily a good thing. So you look at your quality. How well was it made? That goes with balance. Varietally correct. If I'm drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon, it should taste like a Cabernet Sauvignon. Example of this: I, I reviewed Greg Popovich's A to Z wine, not A to Z, um, Silver and Black wine last year. Uh, a to Z is the producer. He's a partner with that with that winery out of Oregon. And I made an assumption that it was Pinot Noir because Pop has a Pinot Noir that he has that he makes that he doesn't sell. It's really for him to hand out to people. And I'm, I'm trying to get an interview with you, Pop. So I'm gonna be bugging you guys, and probably this week I'm starting to bug you about it. But um, I tasted this wine. I was like, man, it really doesn't taste like a Pinot Noir. It tastes like something else. Well, there was no way to tell exactly what it was, but I went through with their website on camera and I started looking at some of the other wines. I said, this just tastes too much like this wine and it's probably just a rebranding of this wine. Maybe a little variation, but it's probably that. Same thing happened at Beaujolais tasting. So Beaujolais is known for Gamay. But we had a sparkling wine. Didn't really think too much about it um, because it didn't. I didn't think it was actually a Beaujolais sparkling wine. I thought it was more of a... Burgundian sparkling wine, which means it's Chardonnay. So then we have this other white wine, and I'm looking at it, and it's like white Beaujolais. I'm like, really, it's a white Beaujolais? I'm tasting it, and, and the master psalms are there, and they're like, blah, 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 and I'm, 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 the, I'm the front part of the table, I'm in front of the class, and I just kind of go, that's really interesting, because I've, I've never had a white wine made from Gamay. And it was, I was all confused, because it really tastes like a Chardonnay. And they're like, it's not a Chardonnay. It's like, well, that's why I think it tastes like a Chardonnay. And I wasn't trying to cover myself, but in my mind, I'm like going, this doesn't taste like a Gamay, even if it's a white Gamay. It tastes like Chardonnay. And so it was. So varietally correct. Is it what you expect it to be? Complexity. Is the wine complex or is it not? Now, some wines don't need to be complex to be really good and get good scores. But if they're very one-dimensional, if it feels like they're a one-trick pony, I might not want to give them such a high score. If it's very complex, as long as everything's balanced and it's made and the quality seems good, then we're okay. Because sometimes it's like, man, there's a lot going on in this wine, but I can't, it's just too much. Okay, so again, too much of a good thing is not necessarily bad. All right, so scoring. Honestly, do I like it or not? That's, that's really the biggest thing about whether I'm gonna, how I'm gonna score the wine. 
Now I'll admit, if I don't like the wine, now I'm gonna really, really drill into the analysis. Is it a good wine? Is it technically a good wine? Not do I like it or I don't like it. If I don't like it, it's gonna get a 60, okay? But how do I score? Well, I kind of combine what Gary Vaynerchuk has done and uh, Robert Parker and the wine enthusiast scoring. And I had this chart, which it, it'd be hard, hard, if I put it up, it's kind of hard for you to read everything, but I got a chart from somewhere off the internet about how we rate wines. And it has all these scoring things, 100 point, 10 point, 20 point, stars, whatever. And they kind of compared everything to see what it was like. Oh, that light just went out. Um, to kind of compare everything to see how, how they all line up. So I'll go through what kind of my general idea. If, if you're just a wine and you're the worst wine in the world, I got this from Gary, you get a 50. I've never had a 50. I've had some that were close, like in the 60s, but if it's just, if you know it's just alcoholic grape juice and it, there's nothing that's horrible, you're gonna get a 50 at least, nothing below. 60s, so okay, so if you're in the 60 to 70, it's a poor wine, it's poorly made. Um, it, it lacks what it needs to characteristically, maybe it's stylistically bad, but it's not good. Man, all the lights are going out. These should be, these should be new batteries. Oops. All right, which means I need to start wrapping this up. 70s, average, but somewhat uninspiring type of wine, okay? 80, good with minimal issues, I didn't buy it again. You get to 85, now we're starting to talk, okay, I'm really starting to like the wine. It's very good, well-made, mostly balanced. If I give something a 90, it's probably excellent. There's, or there's something about it that I really, really like, um, or I think it's really, really exceptional, or not exceptionally, but excellent. 95, it's exceptional. I honestly can't remember if I've given anything a 95. I may have one wine I give it a 95. 100, it's gotta be perfect. Uh, I've never had one, I never expect to, because when I do evaluations <laughs> of people, nobody ever gets a perfect score because we can always improve. But I can see giving something a 98, 99, 97. So we're talking between exceptional and perfection. Or I just pull a number out of my ass. That's what, that's what everybody does, right? All right, that's going to wrap it up. I just had to put that in there. So I'm going to wrap that up. I do uh, thank you for uh, stopping in again this week. I uh, went a little bit longer. I'm trying to get these to be 10 minutes. But um, I hope this was very informative. I hope it reveals a little bit more of how I score wine. Or just in general, how do you analyze a wine? Not just score it, but analyze the wine. Because now you're determining whether it's good or not and whether you should buy it again. Especially if you are in an environment like this where you don't have all these, all the fun wedding receptions or you're partying and this is the best wine you've ever had and then you come home and you're like, it's crap. Okay, because your environment also influences how you rate a wine internally. All right, that's gonna do it. Uh, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, hit the donate button, click the links below to hit the websites for the wines, and we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>